chapter 8 was comparing the slavery that we were under to sin but how we'd been bought and, and adopted uh, I did some research for a Sunday school lesson one time adoption was just the same as it was in those days as it is now um, an adopted son had the same privileges and the same rights as a, as a biological child Right. There were instances, it didn't happen often, but it, it, it would happen that a, a slave would become so beloved by the family that, that, it, that the person served under, and maybe that family had no biological heirs, but they loved that slave so much that they would legally adopt. <laughs> 
so that once where the, the slave had no right to anything, was just a, a servant with, with no rights at all, was bought and sold like property, a lot like we were when we were under the servitude of sin. Our master, when we were back, back then, our master cared nothing for us, cared nothing about our future, cared nothing about our well-being. Mm -hmm. But in those instances, when, when the slave would be brought in as a son, it, their name appeared in the will just like anybody else's. So no doubt that's what's in Paul's mind when he says we have not received the spirit of bondage, <laughs> the spirit of slavery, again, to fear, but we have received the spirit of of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then we're heirs. <laughs> if we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus, if so mean that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. I'm just going to keep reading. He says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time oh, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Come on, Josh, one more time.